It's always the styles that you think would be easy to make that would stress you the most. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Priscilla. I'm a Nigerian women's wear designer based in the UK. This video is a follow-up to a previous tutorial where I showed how to make the patterns for this cutout dress. If you haven't seen the pattern tutorial already, I'm going to link it on the screen and down below. So please watch that first before you come to this one because you need to have made your patterns before you stitch the dress. Because in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to cut the dress, stitch it, add the zips, the buttons, everything to make it complete and fit perfectly on you. I'm also going to be showing you some mistakes I made in the end so you can avoid them and have an overall better fit for yourself because the dress is no hard. It's just technical. That's what I would say about this style. So it's very doable if you do it at a pace that does not overwhelm you. I have divided this video into chapters so you kind of like know where specific things are positioned in the video. And if you do enjoy it, give it a thumbs up with that being said, let's get into the tutorial. Like I mentioned earlier on, there is a separate pattern tutorial which I'm going to link on the screen and down below in the video description. And the pattern from that tutorial is what I'm using to cut the dress in this video. We've already created the skirts, the top, the sleeve and all the patterns that I need to cut this dress. Because once the pattern is kind of done, you have a template to cut the different parts of the dress that you can then stitch together to create the full piece. Once all of the pieces have been cut in the main material, I actually use the same fabric to cut the lining. The lining of the dress is for the top and the skirt. The sleeve is not lined. You can add a lining for your sleeve if you want, but my sleeve is not going to be lined. I essentially just cut a simple round neck the same way that I did with the main material. That's what I did with the lining. The only difference with the lining is the skirt of the lining is shorter than the skirt of the main dress in this print. And I'm going to start off with stitching the top half. And on the back, I have gone in to pin away the back waist dart. And with a chalk, I've marked the exact point that I need to stitch my dart to. Now I'm going to put right sides together of the front and the back pieces and the plan is to join the shoulder seam and only one of the side seam because I want to fix a zip on the other side. So one side has to be open for you to be able to go in and fix your zip. Now I'm just sewing the shoulder and side seam on a one centimeter seam allowance. This I'm not going to need to overlock or anything because the dress is going to be lined on the top and on the bottom. So I'm going to work on the lining later on. And this is what the top half of this dress is looking like so far. You can go ahead and give your seams a press if you want at this point. But I'm going to be attaching my zip on the open side seam first. I'm going to be sewing in this invisible zip and I've turned it in such a way that the open, open side of the zip is at the bottom. So I'm able to open up the zip in that direction. Direction. Now I'm pinning with the zip open like this on the side seam and I'm leaving just a little bit of the zip pulled out of that underarm area so I'm able to close off that edge once I'm done sewing both sides of the zip tape to both sides of the side seam. I'm just going in here to finish this other side of the zip tape and then I'm going to go to that bottom area, the bottom area of the zip that is still open and then stitch that close. That would be the underarm or the side seam of that particular armhole. Now I've gone off camera and stitched my lining pieces together in the same way that I did the top. So I stitched the dart, joined one of the side seam and the shoulder seams as well. With the lining, just be aware that you now have to start mirroring things. So the open side of your lining has to match the side where your zip is. <laughs> this gave me such a headache because I had to go and unpick things and redo things. But I'm putting right sides together of the lining and the main top because the plan is to stitch around the front neckline, the back neckline, around that keyhole detail to finish up the neckline of the dress. Now on one of the sides on that back area, I'm going to be inserting a small or short bias tape. This is going to become my button loop. You can make this with your same fabric. You can do like a short strap and insert that. You could also use the really slim elastic bands to create your button loop if you want. I'm just 
just using a navy blue bias tape and this i'm going to stitch as i'm sewing around my neckline on the front on the back around that keyhole detail so i have a re really nice beautiful clean finish this is like a very straightforward way to finish neckline if you don't want to sew a facing if you don't use bias tape and if you don't want to do a simple rolled hem on a curved seam once i was done stitching that i'm going in to cut short snips along the seam allowance be mindful not to cut into your actual stitch i'm trimming around corner so when i turn this entire neckline inside out and give it a press i have a smooth finish on the neckline now i'm going to use the open edge of my lining to finish the edge of my zip this part i'll say is a little bit technical but if you do you have the inside of your blouse really nicely finished and you don't see your zip or any raw edge now i've put right sides together of my lining and my top and i've sandwiched the zip tape inside there like so and this i'll do for the left side and for the right hand separately and like we finished off the bottom end or that like open end underneath the zip we need to repeat the same thing on the lining as well so this i'm just going to put together like so and then i'm going to take it back to my machine and just sew from the very edge where the zip stops all the way to the edge of this particular seam like so <music> After turning everything inside out and giving it a press, this is what the top half of my dress is looking like. I actually made a mistake that you guys cannot see but I will tell you so you're able to avoid it like I have. Just be mindful that when you are lining an asymmetric piece, you will have to mirror your lining. So if you cut your pattern on one side with your, on your main fabric, you have to turn your pattern the other way to cut your lining. Please be mindful of that. At this point, I'm going in to stitch the hemline of the lining to the hemline of the top and this i've done with right sides facing each other you will need to leave a small opening to turn the top inside out and i'm going to start up from one edge of where the zip is and then i'm going to sew up until a considerable point do a back stitch to secure that and then i'm going to leave an opening that is about four inches wide so i can go back in and turn this piece inside out with this opening in place, it allows me to get access into the right side of the garment while I'm finishing the hemline of the top really nicely. Because it's a cutout top, you're going to see that edge of your top if you don't finish it thoroughly. Now that hole I have tucked in, folded in by a centimeter and I've just done a top stitch to finish it up. Now this is what my hemline of the top half of this dress is looking like so far so good i'm going to go in to fix the sleeve i've done a dedicated tutorial on how to make the patterns for the puff sleeve how to stitch everything but essentially with the puff sleeve you would make the sleeve head con a little bit wider not a little bit like a lot wider than the armhole head of your top that way you have a little bit of fabric to gather in like i'm doing here to create the puff effects that the sleeve has now I folded right sides facing each other and this i'm going to sew overlock and add the elastic around the hemline to gather it back to my actual elbow measurements this i'm going to repeat for the left and for the right sleeve before pushing that into the armhole of the top of the dress i'm going to take this and sew the sleeve into the armhole of the top on a one centimeter seam allowance once i'm done stitching this i went ahead to overlock it off camera you can use an overlocker, you can use a zigzag stitch, or you can use a bias tape to finish off the seam that connects your armhole to your top. Now this is what the top of the dress is looking like. It's looking really nice. This is also a really cool way to make like a crop top or crop blouse if you don't want to add a skirt with an asymmetric like front shape. But I'm going to set the top aside and focus on working on the skirt. Similar to how I assembled the top half, I have gone ahead to pin away the darts on the back of the skirt and the darts I've pinned on the wrong side of the fabric. Once I'm done doing that, I'm going to sew up one of the side seam. You need to take note of which side seam that you are stitching and which side seam you need to leave open. I wanted the side seam where my top zip was to match with the side seam of where my skirt zip was going to be. So I stitched away the other side where I don't want my zip to sit. So I'm going to be sewing up the side seam on a one centimeter seam allowance. Once 
I'm done with that, I'm going to grab my second invisible zip and fix it on the side of the side seam that I have left open. I always like to leave the entire seam whenever I'm sewing an invisible zip. I find it a lot easier to do. So I'm going to open up the zip like I did with the top and then pin the right side of the zip to the right side of the fabric, this side of this tape to this side of this edge of the seam and then I'm going to pin the other side of the zip to the other side of that seam. So I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to be sewing using my slim zip footer which I think I've done an unboxing for. I got like a set of foots and this is one of the ones that I found for sewing in invisible zips with my industrial machine. After sewing this side I'm going to turn the piece to the other side to attach this second side of the zip tape to the other side of the side seam. Once this is all done, I'm now going to go to the bottom of that seam that is still open. Remember, we just attached the zip to the top edge and I'm going to be sewing up that bottom side that is still open. I'm going to sew as close as possible I can to the end of the zip from this top edge. Sew my way all down to the bottom of the hemline of the skirt. Now this is what the skirt is looking like. The zip has been fitted in really, really nicely. And now I know I'm ready to use my lining to finish the waistline and the zip edge of the skirt. Off camera, I have assembled my skirt lining in a similar manner like I did with the main one. That's sewing away the back that joining the side seam that does not require the zip and then with the edge that is open that I'm going to use to finish the edge of the zip tape on the inside of the fabric. So I've just pinned everything together so when I go to my machine I don't really need to think if it is aligning where it should be aligning. I know <laughs> notches and points have been you know joined together in a way that i want now i'm going to start from one end of this side seam like so and then when i get to the waistline leave my needle in lift my footer and then sew along the front the back and then make my way to the other edge of the side seam this you can still as one continuous stitch because the hemline of the skirt is still open so this is how you would turn this piece inside out To finish up the lining, I am matching right sides together and I'm sewing that open end that sits underneath the zip. Once that is all done off camera, I went in to sew a wide elastic to the back waistline because the back waistline of this skirt was really really loose. So I essentially just attached a piece of elastic on one end and then as I pulled the elastic, I stitched in the excess. That was how I snatched in the waistline on the back. The final step to finish up this dress is to loop the extended edges on the front around this wooden ring. This wooden ring is about 2 inches in terms of like diameter if I remember correctly. And this I'm going to wrap around at the end like so. So wrap the skirt around the bottom end and then wrap the top around the top edge. And because the ring is not very wide, you can't really see much of it once I was done stitching the looped edges in. You can stitch this in by hand if you don't want your stitch visible. You can also gather in the edge that you are wrapping around if you want the gathers to be evenly spread before you go ahead to stitch it like I'm about to do now. So I'm sewing on the right side of the fabric because I want this side to be nice and tidy since this is what is visible to everybody else looking at me. So this I'm going to be sewing around the ring like so on the top and on the bottom edge. And this is how the top and the bottom half of the dress is connected around this ring here. Once I was done doing this, I went ahead to try on the dress to see if I wanted to make any more changes. And there was just a little bit of wiggle wiggle free room there and this I just stitched away as a dot on the top and on the bottom to ensure that it laid nice and flat around the mid section of the dress. Once I was done stitching away the dot I gave my piece a press and this is what it looks like all done. I love the way it fits now, it's super comfortable, it's the style, it's the kind of style that you wear on a hot day and breeze will actually blow your back even when it's really hot it is a dress that you can you know dress up or down depending on the shoes your accessories and every other thing else and where you plan to wear this dress to i love the outcome huge shout out to 
Choma. Choma is the one that gave me this fabric. Choma of the only Choma on Instagram. Thank you so much. I love how this piece came out. I can't wait to wear this on holiday. And yes, I am going on holiday and I'm definitely taking this dress to me with me. And I know I'm going to feel beautiful in it. Now, what would I do differently about this dress? I like how it sits now. I would wear it, but as someone who makes clothes for a living, I can just tell that there are some things that I could have done better. The first thing is I feel like the skirt should be a little bit higher on the waist. It's quite low. I don't mind showing back. Some people might find that a bit much. So I would say when you're creating a skirt pattern, just make the skirt a little bit higher on the back, especially because I dropped the waistline on the back of the skirt. I would also say measure that waistline before you slash and spread because my back skirt is actually very, very wide. That's why I added the elastic. So after stitching away the dart, the back of the skirt was still quite loose and was really, really low. So adding the elastic was how I was able to salvage the back of the dress. So just be mindful of your measurements on your pattern before you cut and stitch your dress. I think those are like the two things that I would do differently if I were to do this again or make this for a client. So you can just make those changes on yours so you have an overall better fit for your dress. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this project, this video. And this dress took me a while. I don't know why I thought it was going to be easy, cute and straightforward, but no. It's always the styles that you think would be easy to make that would stress you the most. So I'm just glad I was able to, you know, end up with a result that I could actually wear. I'm going to link all previous tutorials that you need. The tutorial for the, the puff sleeve, the tutorial for the patterns. So if you haven't seen those already, you can go ahead and watch them before you come and, you know, go through this one to create your dress. Until next time, have a good morning, afternoon and evening wherever you are. Bye!